our lesson for today will be looking at chemistry 1502. The topic for today will be looking at IUPAC naming lesson 103. Let us start. This lesson video is under practice question lesson series, meaning that we'll be looking at as many examples as we can if we do not have enough examples due to the length of this lesson video we are going to have the next lesson video meaning that you're going to have lesson 104 which is the continuous of this it's very important to go through the lesson series of are you pack naming before you can watch this lesson video and remember the practice question lesson videos they are meant to consolidate a chapter so whenever i display a question you simply pause the video you work out the question and play the video then you will see that you actually understood the chapter or not so without wasting any more time let us start with our first example we have this structure whereby we can see that we have an hydroxy group an alcohol this belongs to alcohol but in this case we have two alcohols this type of molecules, we normally call them dialcohols or diols, or we can say they are glycols. So how do we name this? We look at the parent chain. So we have how many carbons? We have three carbons. So we can see that we have it's propane, there's no double bond. And then looking at the position, definitely sure if we start from this side we have one two three it simply means that one not one actually two um three this is where we have our alcohols and then when you compare it with starting from here we have one two three it's one two three so you can see that we have one two that's where we find our OH so we can compare the two we can see that this one it's the lowest number it's one against two two against three so this will be the correct one so combining the two we are going to have it's one comma two hyphen pro panol but remember that we have two of them this is a dialcohol so we have to show that within the IUPAC name so it will be propane diol So I just use the different color so that you can see that this diol, it represents the number of the hydroxy group we have. Remember that di in chemistry, it normally shows that we have two. Let us quickly go to the second one. Let me just use the very same space. Suppose we have something like this, CH2. CH2OH. We can say it's OH. It's like this. So we can see the parent chain. We have how many carbons? We have two of them. So it will be ethane. Ethane. And then we can see whether we start on the left or right. It will be the very same thing. So it's on carbon number one two or on carbon number one two we have these hydroxy groups so definitely sure we are going to have a diol on the IUPAC name so position one and two that's where we have our OH so we are going to have one comma two hyphen ethane diol we go to the next one 
remember pause the video and work it out to play the video to verify now this one is a bit complicated but if you understand the basics the principles how to apply them it will be very much simple so we have an alkyne an alkene and our hydroxy group then we have our substituents we don't normally consider the halogens our functional groups they are substituents when it comes to ranking or priority they are just the same as the methyls and the ethyls the substituents so the question is are we going to start from here or here in this case hydroxy still takes the priority comparing it to alkynes and alkenes so we have one two three four five six seven and eight so our parent chain is oct or octa then let us look at the positions position number one that's where we have our alcohol. Let's say O L. Position number two. That's where we have our broom. Position number three. That's where we have our iron. Position number five. We also have our iron. Position number seven, we have our chloro. And then position number seven also, we have our, our in. So we need to combine this. Now remember that the functional groups normally we I write them at the end of the parent chain and then the substituents they normally before the parent chain like your your methyl ethyls tetrabutyl propyl isopropyl we put them before the parent chain so we can see that this is a substituent this is also the substituent so we are going to start with this alphabetical order you can see that we are going to start with broom. So we have two hyphen broom hyphen seven. It's actually seven hyphen chloro. Then from here we don't have any substituent. Then we are going to introduce or we are going to put our parent chain. So it will be chloro and let us not omit this mistake. We should not have any alphabet in capital letters here. And then we are going to introduce our parent G. We have octa. Then from here it's hyphen. If we have a number of functional groups Let's say we have alkene and alkyne in one structure. Just know that we are going to represent alkene first, followed by alkyne. If we have alkyne and alcohol, just know that we are going to start with alkyne, followed by alcohol. In this case, we have three of them, so we are going to start with this, followed by our alkynes, and lastly, our alcohol. So we have we have to represent this seven hyphen n and then from here it's hyphen we we write our alkynes now let me just remove this you can see it's five alkyne so we have two alkynes 
position 3 and 5. So it will be 3, 5 hyphen die. Be very careful because remember that if we have 2, we have die, ein, and then lastly we have our alcohol hyphen 1 hyphen or. It's a very long IUPAC name, but it is interesting. If you got it correct, it means you understand this chapter, but you don't have to be worried, especially if you've managed to get part by part, but did not manage to generate this long IUPAC name. Let us go to the next one. Our next example. Now with this one, this is an example that I was emphasizing just a few minutes ago. So the question is, are we going to start from here? Or are we going to start from here? We can compare the two. Remember that we always look for the lowest number. Let's start from here. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9. In this case, we have no name as our parent chain. There's no double bond. And then carbon number 2, we have chloro. Carbon number 7 and 8, we have methyl. We have methyl. And then carbon number eight we also have our methyl. So combining this, we are going to have two chloro. Hyphen seven comma eight hyphen di methyl. No name, no name. Let us compare it when we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So carbon number eight. We have our chloro. Carbon number two. We have our methyl. Carbon number three, we have another methyl. So looking at the name, we have eight. Chloro hyphen 2,3 hyphen dimethyl no name now comparing this okay in this case this will take the cup because it is lower than this and then we have 7 against 2 we take the cup 8 against 3 we take the cup so this will be the correct IUPAC name I repeat the halogens, they are considered as a substituent. They only share the same priority with the methyls and the ethyls. So in this case, we look at the substituent which is closest to the lowest number or the substituent that has the lowest number. In this case, you can see that our methyls are on the lowest they are actually having the lowest number so this is the IUPAC name we still have more examples but we are going to take those examples to the next lesson which is lesson 104 we're just going to continue from example number six we're not going to start with example number one that's it for this lesson video this is Wakula SJ thank you very much